Hello everyone, Retro Robbie here with another break. And yes, it is my second box of Repax Wax, just the 70s. If you uh, saw my last box, you know it was pretty decent. There were some highs and lows. There was, you know, a couple of cards that were less than spectacular, uh, meaning they were like creased or stuff like that. But then uh, the one that saved my last box was that one right there, the 1973 Dwight Evans rookie card, and it's in great condition. So, um I might even uh, get this graded. I don't know. I'm thinking about it. It could be worth an 8 or a 9, I'm going to say. Um, so I'm thinking about it. I put it in one touch. So definitely uh, was the highlight of the last box. So I'm hoping this box is going to do the same thing. So I'm just going to break into it and hope that we turn out good if I go get two for two. Like I said, that Dwight Evans saved that last box. So there wasn't really that much in there. A couple of stars and then that Dwight Evans rookie card. And that was it. So let me put this up here. Let's open it. That's what it looks like. And as you know, uh, you know, they have the uh, stickers on each side so the cards don't get waxed and hurt and all that. So I'm going to put that right there. And let's get breaking. Oh. Uh, Let's hope this box is good and get two for two. This sucker sold out quick, too. So I tried to get another one, and they were sold out. So he was quite successful in these, and I'm going to assume he's going to do it again. So we start out with 1976, Tom Bergmeier from the Twins. And unfortunately, there's a big old crease right down there. So that's too bad. All right. And that's starting out good. But 1978, Rich Dower. 1979, Jerry Kuzman. Man, that's in good shape. And our first 72, Ray Corbin. It is, there is, look at that damage right there. That is too bad. That is in and off centered. 66, it's his rookie card. Fortunately, I had that one, so that will go to someone else. But unfortunately, uh, we're not starting out good here. Uh, Earl Weaver, 1978. Ken Berry, 1973. Uh, Jeff Burroughs, 76 uh, from the Rangers. Eh, soft corner there. And our first 1970, Kevin Collins. Uh, really weak corner there, unfortunately. Uh, but it's a high-numbered 707, so... As you know, that counts as a hit because high number cards, even in hard condition like this, is still good value. So we're going to set that aside. Um, looks like he's played for three years. Don't know much about Kevin Collins, but we'll put him in there. It's a high number card. And we have a Johnny Bench and Jeff Burgess, 1975 tops. And it's in good condition. A little off. It's all centered, but oh, there's a crease right there. Darn it. Ugh. I know it's hard to see, but you can see that right there. Um, that's too bad. It probably has a little value with a Johnny Bench on it. So we'll put that aside. And very last one, very nice, 1979, Carl Yaskremski. So, and that one is in good condition. So very nice. You can never go wrong with a Carl. I will take that. Yeah, that's, that's in good condition there. So very nice. Got a hit. Got a good star there in the first pack. I will take that. So I know what the rest were. All right. Here we go. George Hendricks, 1976 tops. And that one is in pretty good shape. Not bad. Jim Willoughby, San Francisco Giants, 73. Uh, Ivan Morrell. I actually have that card as well. 677. So not the super high, but the semi-high series, I believe. I'll have to double check that, but... I don't. I believe that series. Yeah, a 677. It might be a high series. I'm gonna put that over to the research it because that might be a hit too. Uh, the corners are pretty decent. A little weak corner there, but that's not bad. We'll take that. Like I said, I know I have that one, so won't go to my album, but definitely a good hit there. High numbered. Uh, 79. Andy Replegal. 
I've never heard of him. 1979. Tim McCarver, 77. Ron Say, he's been following me around too. Um, 1975, All Star card. John Scott from the Blue Jays, 78. And there is another 1970, Jack DeLaro from the Houston Astros. 382, not a high number. Looks like he played for the Mets the prior year. Oh. Next one up is Roy White. I always liked Roy White. Oh, but look at the damage. That card is damaged. That's too bad. Everything else is good. But that looks like we got bounded or something. That that Someone took a bite out of that card. That's too bad. I'm a Roy White fan, so that's too bad. Uh, last one is Ray Fossey. 1974 tops. Really bad corner there, unfortunately. Oh, keep on going. I just hope my hit is not really damaged. My, I hope I get a hit, but um, let's start it out here. Ken Henderson, Atlanta Braves, 77 tops. That one looks like a good condition, and it is a little waxy there. But other than that, not too bad. Rob Piccolo, Oakland A's, 78. And Louis Tia, he's been kind of following me around too. I had, I got a 71 in the um, last box. So this one's a 1970 and it's all centered, but the corners are pretty decent. That's a little soft corner, but 231. So not bad. So we'll take it. And next one up is uh, 74, Don Crithers, San Francisco Giants. 1972 Boots Day. I have that card. 254. Well, that's too bad. I was hoping to get a 72 that I need. I don't have that many left. 75 Fred Stanley. That one's in decent condition. That corner's a little dinged, but other than that, that's too bad. Jim Colburn. Milwaukee Brewers. 76. In decent shape. Pat Kelly. 73. Uh, not a high series. Jim Acker, another 73. Chicago Cubs, 262. No. Our first 71 from the Minnesota Twins, Rick Rennick. And that's not a bitch. Uh, well, that corner's, eh. that corner's pretty dinged. But other than that, it's kind of a sharp card. 694. I'm gonna, that is a high-numbered one as well. So at least we're getting some high numbers here in the 70s through 72s. Or... Yeah, they go to 73s. They stopped doing series in 73, so uh, after from 74 on, they went to one series. 78, Jerry Royster. That one looks like it's in decent shape, so not bad. All right, let's continue on. Oh. All right. Sparky Lyle, New York Yankees, 1979 tops, and that is in good condition. Uh, Jerry Rice, Pittsburgh Pirates, 75. Well, that's not bad either. A little weak corner there, but that's not too bad. John Stern, 77, and that card has a big old chew mark there too, so that's unfortunate. 76, Jerry Groat, New York Mets. Uh, all centered. That corner's a little weak, but not too bad. 1974, Tops. Uh, Houston's Astros manager, Preston Gomez. That's not in bad shape. Off-centered, though. Uh, 1973, Mike Caldwell. San Diego Padres. Well, that's a low numbered one. And Frank Quilsey. Quil Quilicky? Uh That's the bright orange. You can tell the bright orange there. Um, so that is... So I'll double check if this is a variation card. Well, it might be, but I know it's the bright orange version of that card. So unfortunately, well, it's ruffled there. That's too bad. 1972 Rick Oshber. Or Ockback. Ockback. Sorry about that. 1972. That's in good condition, actually. 153. I know I have that one as well. But that's some good condition. And nice 78 Rock Carew. But oh my gosh, look at that crease. Oh, the whole thing's creased all through there. Wow, I don't take much. You could you could definitely see that. Oh, come on. I can't even grade that. I can't even. 
put a price on that because it's so be up. Uh, uh, okay. 1970 Buck Martinez. I actually have this card from 1970. Corners dinged, but it's 609. It is his rookie card, so very nice there. Unfortunately, it's a little the dings quite obvious there. It's a major ding in the right corner there. Right there. So too bad. Buck Martinez. Nice card. I think it's high series. I'll have to double check that. I put that aside, but it's Buck Martinez's rookie card. Has a little value, even though uh, it's more known for the announcer than the player. Well, next up, 1975-1954, most valuable player uh, card. That's a good shape, too. That's a nice one. Uh, it has Yogi Berra and Willie Mays on it, so that might have a little value to it. I might just show that one. I'll put that side there. 77, Stan Barnson, Oakland A's, and Fred Sherman from the Detroit Tigers. Really bad corner there. It's really dinged. I know, yeah, it's number six. I know I have that card too. So other than that, it's too bad that they didn't cornered. Jim Catfish Hunter, Boyhood Stars, 1973. They did that in 72 and 73. So that's a young Jim Hunter, and that's in pretty decent shape. I'll take that. 78, Atlanta Braves, Dave Campbell. Off-centered. Big gold corner ding there. That's too bad. 1974, San Francisco Giants, and whoa, that's bad. <laughs> oh, oh, there's a crease up there. And, oh, that is flimsy stock there. Oh, too bad. Ah. 79, Bill... Naroni, probably pronouncing that wrong, but Chicago White Sox, 1979, and that's in decent shape. Oh, nice, 1970, fifth series checklist, and that's in good condition, actually. Oh, wow. that one's actually nice. That might have a little value to it. You know, checklists aren't the best thing to get, but when it's in that good condition, um, you know, it's a little off-centered. You're not going to get a good grade out of that, but I'll uh, set that aside there. That might have a little value. Uh, 1971, Jose Arcai. Uh, San Diego Padres. That's in decent shape for 71. 134. 1977, Rick Manning for the Cleveland Indians. Yeah, that's in decent shape. All right. Well, nothing major yet, and even so, that Rod Carew was completely trash, so I can't even count that one. All right, 1974, Ralph Gar, Atlanta Braves. That one's okay. 1970, Clay Kirby, and that one's in decent shape, too. Low numbered. 1979, looks like it is his rookie card, though. Oh, very nice, Clay Kirby. All right, 1978, Jim Sundberg from the Rangers, and that's in pretty good shape. 1979, Steve Renko, Oakland A's, off-centered, but it's not in bad shape. 1971, Bill Mazeroski, very nice, that's in decent shape, too. 110, towards the end of his career there. That's not a bad card. I will set that aside. That might have some value to it. As you know, he was a decent player in the day, especially in the 60s. Pittsburgh Pirates seems to be a Pittsburgh Pirates pack. 1975, Al Oliver. Not in good shape. That corner is really chewed up there. 1976, Dave Nelson from the Royals. And a very bad airbrush hat i should do a top 10 of the worst airbrush hats in the 70s that would be a good episode i'd have to find them because man that is bad airbrush he came from the rangers oh uh, 535 dave nelson 1973 danny carter there is a big old crease right there big crease there not in good shape unfortunately Another 1971, Ed Spezio, Los San Diego Padres from 1971. Not in bad shape there. That corner's kind of crushed. And a number six there, so a very low number there. Uh, 1978, Raleigh Fingers, and that is in really bad shape. <laughs> crease, crease, crease. 
Back corner, off centered. Ugh, that is an ugly rally fingers. But in his mustache prime, that is for sure. Oh, too bad. Uh, come on, give me a star that's at least decent shape. Six more packs. Here we go. Come on. Getting towards the end here. Let's hope we find something good. 1979. Jerry Martin. Very nice. So we will take it. 1975. Horatio Pena. Looks like an airbrush hat, too. In good shape. Bob Bailey, 1974. Off-centered, but in decent shape. Nice. Ken Griffey Sr. there, 1976. Rough corner there, but other than that, not too bad. 1974, Philadelphia's Philly, Dick Rufkin. And it's not in good shape. Cre crease. Something going on there. Ugh. All right, not in good shape there. Ed Goodson, 1973. Yeah, that's a little numbered one. Rough corner down there. A really rough corner up there. Uh, Pat 1973, Pat Dobson. Oh, really bad corner up there. Low numbered. 1972, Mike Kecky. 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 Yeah, Kek. Kek. Kitch. New York Yankees. All centered, but in good shape, actually. 138. I believe I have him. I will have to check that out. Sticker. 1978, Gil Flores. And last one, 1970, pitcher Jim Bunning. So a decent star. Uh, good shape, too. 403. So I'll take a peek at that car. That might have a little value to it. No major stars yet. We're down to five packs left. Let's see, we get one here. And rookie. That's not bad. Number 75 rookie outfielders. Uh, Gary Matthews. Tom Pekorik. Petroric, I think. Yep, Petroric. And Jorge Roque. Uh, those two are the ones. They both had decent careers, solid careers. Both Gary Matthews and Tom. So very nice. Again, that's 606. It's a higher number one. Really bad corner there. Uh, rougher corner there. We'll take a peek at that, see what the value of is of that one. 1978, Randy Elliott. That uh, one's in decent shape. 1972, George Mitterwald, Minnesota Twins. Not in bad condition. 301. Probably have him. I will check that out. And 1974, rookie outfielders. So this one's okay. Um, Ed Ambister, Bake McBride, Brian Downey, and Rich Balt. Uh, Bake McBride and Ed Ambister are probably your two bigger names. They had decent careers, especially Bake McBride. Um, not in the best condition. I'm really bad corner up there. May have that one, but still not bad. 1976 Hank Webb, New York Mets. That one's in good condition. 1978, Fred Kendall, uh, rough corners, that's for sure. Willie Horton from the Detroit Tigers, 1977. Uh, that's a bad corner there, that's too bad. Good card there. And 1979, Al Herbrowski, that's in good condition. And 1975, Cleon Jones, decent card there, it's in good condition, so we'll take that. And last one, not in good condition, Clay Kirby. That is, yeah, that's rough. That's for sure. That's used and abused. That's too bad. All right. Four left. Let's go. Let's do this. Oop, a sticky there. Bruce Kissen, Pittsburgh Pirates. Didn't corner up there. 77. 1972, Ray Lamb. That is a bad airbrush, that's for sure. Uh, it's in good condition, though, that's for sure. 422, I believe I have this card, but I will double check it. As you know, I almost have all the 72s. I pretty much have almost all the lower series, that's for sure. Gene Alley, Pittsburgh Pirates, 1973. 
the higher numbered one. That's nice. Uh, 1975 Brewers, Charlie Moore. And that's in decent shape. And 1976, John Hiller of the Detroit Tigers. Oh, that one's in decent shape. A little soft corner, but not too bad. Tom Hutton, Montreal Expos, 1979. And that's in good shape. Rick Roden, LA Dodgers, very off-centered. And the tops are it's pretty raw, rounded corners there. I'm getting some 71s here. Ed Stroud. Washington Senators. Uh, that's not a bad shape. That's a good shape. That's a passable shape. I'll take that. 217. And burnt by 11. Very nice. I will take that. It is all centered, but the corners are pretty sharp. So that's probably about a 7 or 8, I'm going to say. Very nice. I think that's a rookie card, too. It is. It is a burnt by 11 rookie card. That's a good one to have. And considering, you know, it's a little off-centered, you're not going to get a 10 or a 9, but you might get an 8 or a 7. So that one is in good shape. Wow, very nice. That's going to be our hit of the day, I'm going to imagine. Burt Bylevin, 1971, Minnesota Twins. Very nice. We will take that. And my, one of my favorite players, I'm going to play the clip. You know I'm going to play the clip. <laughs> Pinch hitting six, for Pedro Borbon, Manny Mosa, Mosa. Borbon, Borbon, Borbon. Very nice. I'm happy. That one might uh, make the pack too. I'll have to double check that. Oh, always the, towards the end there we get something good. The suspense, that's for sure. 1975 Caesar Sedano. Uh, rough corner on top there. Rough bottom corner. Not too bad, though. 1978, Gary Ross. Eh, not good condition. Rick Camp, 1979, off-centered. Eh, that corner's dinged, but other than that, not too bad. Uh, 1970, Don Clendion, from New York Mets. Off-centered, but the corners are in good condition. Number 280. And 1974, Rico Petroselli. So that one's in good shape. I'll take that. Rico was pretty good in the day. In the mid-70s there, he was really good. 1973, Ron Bloomberg. 462, in good shape. That's, yeah, that's in good shape. 1976, Jerry Groot. New York Mets. Decent shape. That's a little soft corner, but that's that's pretty good. And 1973, Milt Wilcock, and this one is in bad condition. Crease, crease, rough corner there. That's too bad. I like Milt Wilcock. Oh. Uh, 1975, Jim Bibby, and that one has a crease in there. Darn it. Come on. At least don't give me cards with creases. That is a big crease. Ugh. Too bad. I can't use cards with creases in them. 1978, Gary Bear. 1978, rough corners there. Final two. Pull these out. I'm going to say that's probably going to be my hit right there. Is that Burt by 11? That is in pretty decent shape. Other than the off centered, it's pretty good. Well. We will take it, that's for sure. I don't have a 71 Burt by 11. At least I don't think I do. I'll have to check. 1973, Mickey Rivers. And that one's in good condition. Uh, 1978, Raleigh Eastwick. Yeah, that's in, you know, there's a crease in there. Darn it. That would have been in good condition once for the crease. 1972 tops. Very off-centered. George Scott. I do have that one, but off-centered. 1976, Jerry Johnson. Uh, that one's in good shape. And 1976, Jim York. And that's in good condition, too. And a 1978 checklist in decent shape. Corners are a little rough, but not too bad. 1977, Expos, Mike Jorgensen. Not a good corner at all whatsoever there. 1979, Ed Figueroa. That's in good shape. And 1975, Steve Renko. 
Like he was in my last box too, but man, the crease. Crease, these 75s have all these creases down the middle. I've been noticing that. Ugh. And there's the 74. We got the 73. And there's the 74. Tom Trorick from the LA Dodgers. Yeah, that's a decent card. Last pack in the box. I'm going to say that by 11 is my hit right there. Oh. Let's see. What do we get in the last pack? Oh, nice. Dave Winfield. Off centered, but oh, it's kind of creased down there. It's kind of bent upward. But we will take it. I don't think I have that one. 1976, Dave Heverlow. Giants. Yeah, average condition. 1970, Jose Martinez, Pittsburgh Pirates. And that is in good condition. Uh, number eight. It's a very low number card there. No. 1973 Game on World Series. This is the 74. That's, uh, I believe, Rally Fingers uh, opening it up there. And that's in good condition. Unfortunately, they just show the batting. They don't show pitching. So, But 2-1. to one, Oakland won Game 1. As you know, they won the series. But that's when the Mets snuck in there. That's for sure. Oh, Oakland was so powerful back in the early 70s. Whoa. 1979, Leroy Stanton, Seattle Mariners, and Brewers, 1977, Jerry Austin with a little Topps All-Star rookie trophy on there. I love those. And that's in good condition, too. It's very nice. 1973, Lynn McLaughlin, Boston Red Sox pitcher, rough corners, that's for sure, especially in the top ones there. Oh, nice, Steve Carlton, 1975. Very nice. It, it's been waxed, but that's uh, probably the original pack wax. I can see it there in the glare. Uh, there's a little bit of wax there, but still, the corners are pretty decent. Uh, this one's a little rough there, but still a good find. 1975, Steve Carlton, and this is going to be a 75 run to end it off. 1975, Cardinals Jack Heideman. That's in really good condition, too. And the last one is the Atlanta Braves, Lou Krause. Uh, that's in good condition, too. So ended up with a 75 run with a Steve Carlton in it. And, again, it's a little rough shape there. But I think my hit's going to be, uh, as you know, the 1971 Burt by 11. I will uh, wrap this up for you like I always do and uh, – give you uh, highlights of what I got and if it was worth it. So stay tuned. All right. So I got it all summarized here and thought I would share with you the outcome of everything. So as you can see, I have it all split up by the years from 70 all the way to 79. So I thought I'd do that for you. So let's start with 1970. 1970, there was nine cards in 1970, and four were considered hits. So the first one there is that very nice Jim Bunning. So towards the end of his career, um, it was very nice. Um, I believe that was like $12 high, so 6 to 12 uh, the next is the checklist, and it's in very con condition. A little off center, but overall pretty good. Um, one nice thing to know about this checklist, this fifth series, there was two variations. If you look at baseball, there, there's a white version and a yellow version. So obviously, you can see the yellow version, and there's no premium whatsoever between white and yellow. So. Uh, people that are collecting master sets, though, will want both. So that's kind of neat, a little tidbit to learn. Uh, next one is that rookie Buck Martinez. So very nice. I think I have this one. I didn't check, but um, I will check. There's a little ding corner there. It's slightly off center, as you can see. But um, as you can see, that's, that's you know, a $250 to $6 card right there. So very nice Buck Martinez there, as you know, famous announcer. And the last one, it's a Kevin Collins. It may not be special, but it is a high-numbered card. 
And you know, as you know, high number cards are single print, and this one's 707. So that one is worth four to ten bucks. So it's just as valuable as that Jim Bunning there, and it all because it is a high numbered. So uh, you know, it has a ding corner there, as you can see right there. But overall, again, it's not too bad. The other three corners are pretty sharp. So. We will add that to our collection, so very nice. So next up is 1971, and we had six cards, and the cool thing about that was of the six cards, three were hits. So we'll go through them here. Um, so the first one is that Bill Mazeroski card, so uh, very nice. It's in very good condition. The corners are almost pristine. Um, they're really good, actually, so... I'm very happy about that, and you know that card goes up to you know ten to twenty five bucks, a lot value, more value in that than I thought there was. So, very happy with that one. Also, we got a Rick Rennick. Um, so, of course, the only thing special about that is it is a high number card. So, as you know, high number cards are worth more. So that's like five to twelve bucks right there, and it's in pretty good shape. That corner's weak, but other than that. Uh, it's in good shape and almost perfectly centered too, so very nice. Uh, getting a little mix here. And as you know, 1971, it was the big hit right there. Burt by 11. Yes, very nice. Uh, same value as that Dwight Evans card. Actually, if I get this graded, um, it might be even more. So I'm actually contemplating it. Um, of doing that because it is amazing what the price of this is and uh, and what I've been kind of reading and following up on is uh, you know some of this says uh, take this one especially has taken off um, so I am very happy with that and actually I'm gonna show you here I'm gonna set this down and I'm gonna bring this up. And this is PSA. And I, there we go. Sometimes this mount does not want to cooperate with me. And I'm gonna zoom it in. So there's there's Burt by Eleven right here. Um, and just to make sure, I'll just there we go. Just zoom it out a little bit. And there you go. So you can see the Burt by Eleven card there. Um, if it comes in, even at a seven, it's 115 bucks and uh, near mint eight, which I think this is about, is about a seven to eight, it's 600 bucks. And man, if I got an 8.5, man, you're looking at a grand card. So this card has huge, huge potential and value. So this is definitely the big hit of the whole bunch is right there. Um, I think it'll probably, I would think it would fall in a seven to eight personally. Um, if I got an eight and a half, that would be <laughs> huge. But that is a Burt by 11 rookie card. Um, that was the major hit of that box. And I am extremely, extremely happy about that. So I'm going to put that right there. Next up is 1972s. So for 72s, we got eight of them. And on the eight, there was one hit, and it is that one right there is Ivan Merle. And again, the only reason why it's a, it's a hit is a high-numbered 677. So that card goes from anywhere from 5 to 12 bucks, And that is in actually pretty good condition as well. A uh, slight corner ding there, but overall that's probably a 7 or 8 again. So again... Very nice card there, high number, 1972. I have that, unfortunately, um, but I got to check through all of it, but I guarantee I have that one. Next up is 1973. We had 17 cards. Uh, this was kind of a, a border hit, only because when I looked it up, it is a common rookie card price. Um, I was actually shocked. It was ranging from two to five bucks, and... That's about the price of a uh, high number 1973. So a little surprise. Unfortunately, it does have a, a, a decent ding right there. But um, I called it a hit because I like the card. It's Gary Matthews and Tom Petrovic. So those are two good players in their time in the 70s and early 80s. So I thought this was, this should have been more valuable than I thought. But hey, 
I go on with what the book value says, so that's unfortunate. But other than that, it's a great card. And again, I had 17 1973s, which were my second highest amount that I had in, in the series. Next up is 1974. Um, so for that one, we had 12 cards, no hits whatsoever in that one. Just commons or semi-commons, so um, only 17 there. I'm going to go back to 73 quick one second, because I like to bring it up, because the people are interested in that. That Minnesota um, manager card there, Frank, I'm not going to pronounce his last name, because I can't, <laughs> as you know. Uh, there are two variations of this. Again, the bright orange and the natural orange, so the, kind of a brownish color. This one is the bright orange, as you can see, which I thought it was. And this one carries a little higher premium. So that goes for like a buck 25 to three bucks. So I did get the, the higher variation one. Um, like I said, I don't know if it's an error or not error. I'm going to call it variation because all the differences is the color orange there and it's uh, Either it's orange or it's kind of a brownish orange or a burnt orange, if you want to call it. So that's that one. I wanted to bring that up. That was a variation card in this lot. Next up is 1975, and we had 15 1975s. Um, the first hit in that one was that uh, 1954 Most Valuable Player uh, between Yogi, Yogi Bear there and Willie Mays. Very nice card. I wish I had both of those in real life, but I don't. This is about as close as I'm going to get to them, I'm sure. Uh, very nice corners. It's well-centered, so I considered that a hit, you know. Um, it, it's it's a, it's a $1.50 to $3 card. Um, and other one is Steve Carlton there, so this one's not bad shape. It has a little ruffling on the top the corner here. Uh, the corner there's a little bent, but and as you can see, it was original wax on top for sure, or gum even. So, but even with that, it's in it's in decent condition. So I I'm gonna accept it. It's a, I'm gonna consider it a hit. Um, that's for sure. It ranges from three to eight dollars. So definitely a hit there. I'm calling it that. Just as an FYI, there was that Jeff Burgess uh, Johnny Bench. It kind of only went. For like two dollars, I think wasn't major. I'm not counting it, but it was still that was still was a good find. That was that Johnny Bench one. If I there it is. There's the Johnny Bench and the Jeff Burgess card. So again, um, yeah, you know, like I said, it 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 was they call it kind of a semi semi star card. So I did not include it, but still, it's a nice one to have. I don't have it. It will go to the collection. Next up is 1976. We got 15 cards of those. No hits there whatsoever, just commons and semi-stars. So um, still quite a bit, 15 there. Next up is 1977. Nine cards there, no hits, all commons or semi-commons. So nothing major in 1977. Next up is 1978, and we had 18 cards, which was the most of the, all the years. So this is the most we got in this box, was 78. Um, as you know, I I had one hit I called. Um, unfortunately, I'm not going to call it Rally Fingers a hit. It is creased up and dinged pretty bad. It's in bad shape. I took half value of that. Even if I took the half value, it's still a dollar fifty card. So, um, you know, someone will need in their collection. That's for sure. I'll probably put in a giveaway here soon, one of these days. Um, look, so look out for that. Same with the Rock Crew. It is really bent there, right there. I can't even count that. So I took half value on that too uh, to count my uh, stat sheet here. And again, that was maybe two bucks, but I'm being generous at two bucks there. Uh, I did not call that a hit because with a crease like that, you're not going to get any value. Um, but again, I'll probably put that in a giveaway so someone can add it to their collection to start off with. So I always wanted to help the people out to start their collections up, that's for sure. But the hit of that one was definitely uh, Dave Winfield there. So um, it is ranges from a $1.50 to $4.00. Um, I mean, there's a little issues going on here, but I'm still calling it a hit. It's not obvious unless you look really, really close to it. Um, but 
I think I'm considering it a hit. And so Dave Winfield is a hit for 1978. Very nice card there. Last up is uh, 1979. We got 12 of them. Uh, all but one was commons or semi-commons, and a hit in that one was good old Carl Skrebsky. And like I said, you can never go wrong with a Carl, uh, that's for sure. Uh, that one ranged from two to five bucks, so I, that's a good hit, too. It's a little off-centered, but, you know, it will take it. It's, it's in pretty good shape. Uh, the corners are pretty sharp, so, um, we will take that. So, Again, I, I I do this. Call me a geek what you want. I don't care. I like to know if I got my value. Um, you know, it was very close to the last box. As you can see, low was 114. High was 200 and just a hair under 290. Um, there's all my hits and all that for each year. I'm going to consider this box better um, than the last box. That's for sure. Um, you know, mainly because... I got a couple more stars in here, even though a couple of them were not in good shape. Um, you know, there was technically more in there. And that Burt by 11, too, man, it is, that is a stunner right there. And I'm going to debate, you know, if I get a 7 or 8 on this, it's going to be worth grading. So I might do that. I might do a grade here. I might get a couple of cards together and maybe do a grading and show it on my channel here. But there's your big hit. Burt by 11, 1971. Uh, if you're a Twins fan, you would have been real happy because you would have also got that high too. So definitely a Twins box, that is for sure. So um, let me know what you think. Did I do good this time? Which box do you think is better, the first or the second box? Let me know. And if you like what I'm doing, hey, please subscribe to my channel. I'm getting close. I'm, I got almost 50. Get 100 there, I'm going to do a giveaway. So hit that subscribe button. Give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment. I love the comments. Good, bad, or indifferent. It's always good to hear from you guys. And then feedback is important no matter how you look at it. So thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Look for more. I'm always going to do more. So Retro Robbie signing out. Remember, collect what you love.